Good afternoon. Uh, my name is LaToya Ruby Frazier. I'm a 2012 visual arts grantee. I'm a photographer and an artist from Braddock, Pennsylvania. And my project is titled A Monument for Braddock. This first image that you see here is a triptych. It's John Frazier who existed before the camera, so it's just a plaque. It's me in the middle dressed in my grandmother's favorite as her porcelain doll, and Andrew Carnegie. These images, the two on the outside of me, were scanned out of a book that I found in the Braddock Carnegie Library called Images of America, Braddock, Pennsylvania, Allegheny County. I excitedly purchased a book from the Braddock Carnegie Library and I took it back with me to my studio only to find by the time I got to the end of the book, all African Americans were omitted from this book and it was published in 2008. So a lot of my work of course grapples with how do I insert not only myself, my family, and my community, but all types of erased people into American history. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Braddock is a historical steel mill town that's home to Andrew Carnegie's first steel mill, the Edgar Thompson plant, and home to his first library, the Braddock Carnegie Library. Next slide. It is located nine miles outside of Pittsburgh along the Monongahela River. Next slide. Through photographs, video, performance, and text, I offer viewers an opportunity to learn about my home through the experience, perspectives, and the bodies of my mother, my grandmother, and me. Environmental degradation, toxicity, and pollution from the steel industry has impacted our bodies. Grandma Ruby witnessed Braddock's prosperous days of department stores, theaters, restaurants, but unfortunately, she died in UPMC Braddock Hospital from pancreatic cancer in 2009. Mom witnessed the steel mills collapse, white flight, and redlining of African Americans. She's been battling cancer and a bone disease and a neurological disorder most of her life, and I've been battling lupus most of my life. Through our three generations, we not only witnessed, we internalized the end of industrialization and the rise of gentrification. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. The image here is an installation I made um, to honor my grandmother's life with her friend and her neighbor, Victoria Haruska, um, collaborating with her neighbor who is, uh, she's in her 90s now, so it was uh, really important for me to do that, to honor my grandmother's life. Some key themes in my work uh, that are very important is the body and the landscape, familial and communal history, private and public space, American history, social activism, and the preservation of silenced and marginalized individuals, families, with a particular emphasis on working class, poor, and elderly citizens. Next slide. There is a pathology in Braddock of historical erasure, historical amnesia, that has not allowed the citizens to heal from decades of racism, segregation, discrimination, and social and economic inequality. As a youth, I noticed that the elders in my community never went into the Braddock Library. And of course, I internalized it and never went in. I feared this building and this architecture because I knew it was a space that we were not permitted. I, I learned that African Americans were not allowed in this library only to discover that there was a music hall, a theater, bowling alley, a gymnasium. And so I started to make portraits of residents in the library who wanted to talk about the fact that they weren't allowed in. And so if you just go to the portraits, this is Miss Evelyn Benzo who chose to sit on the first floor and she told the story about how she helped save the library and served on the board for many years. Next slide. This is Mr. Jim Kidd, who was never allowed to sit in the theater and never been in the music hall, so he wanted his portrait here. Next slide. This is Isaac Bunn, who's a musician and aspiring artist who's been trying to open up his own business only to be rejected by the council and the mayor. So trying to preserve their history, and this is Mr. Mitch Rose, who was never allowed in the pool. In the, in the pool. He can never go swimming with the white people, so he chose to be here and have his picture taken there. 
So at first I thought it would be a good idea to build a monument for Braddock in the library, but I realized a lot of people are going through this all across America. And so right now I'm trying to redesign and rethink how I could do this to reach everyone who t tends to write me letters. And so if you just skip through all these slides to the very end, this is the library of, of and um, this is uh, the show that's up at the Brooklyn Museum right now that kind of shows an example of how I was working towards building a physical archive in the space. Uh, this show closes August 11th. But what I'm looking for, and you can go to the last slide, what I'm looking for for a monument for Braddock is I tr transfer my idea maybe to an online archive database is a web developer to create a database, an online archive that I can manage myself after they teach me. I'm looking for a partnership with an institution, a university, and a museum. And I'm looking for a fellowship so I can return home for a longer extended period of time so I can continue to produce my work. And lastly, I'm looking for an environmentalist. Thank you. Thank you.